Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. It's time for another makeup update. I always love trying new things. Um, maybe they're brand new. Maybe they're new to my collection. But that first impression doesn't always last. And it's so important to come back and to take the time to let you know, yes for this, no for that, and who it might be good for if it doesn't work for me. I will leave my complete makeup updates playlist in the description box below if you're curious. All right, here's where I'm gonna jump in. I'm kind of thinking where to start. Maybe, okay, eyeliner. I didn't really think I'd been trying that much eyeliner, but apparently I have <laughs> more than I thought. Um, the most expensive one here is the new one from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Kitten Flick Eyeliner. This is a black liquid liner with a felt tip and it has like really beautiful precision. Um, my one concern about this is that it takes a minute to dry, but it gives you the thinnest, the most beautiful line. I also like that because it's not a brush tip, this little felt tip, I can actually use it to kind of jab it in between my lashes. Now, I'm not putting this in my waterline, but literally where my lashes are growing out of the edge of my eyelid, sometimes I'll have a space where there's like no eyelash because it fell out. So I'll just go in and kind of like jab a little bit in there to kind of darken that line so it doesn't look like I have a gap there. I'm forever doing that. This works great for that. Um, I have been probably for the last three years using the M Cosmetics Illustrative Liner in brown. I also have it in black, but I just have obsessively been purchasing it in brown. And it up to this point has been my preferred liquid eyeliner. I'm, I'm not sure that this wins out over it, but I have been using it and I really like it. And it gives a very different sort of look. The only problem I have is I forget that it takes a little bit longer than what I'm used to to dry so that if I'm not careful to see how there's a, a wee bit of a smudge <laughs> that's because she wasn't all the way dry so if I'm painting a line out here and I think I'm you know doing pretty good and I go back later and I just kind of do this sometimes I can drag it outside of where I want so this is gorgeous it wears really well I don't find that it runs I don't find that I end up with like kind of smudging or kind of a uh, product collecting in the outer corners or inner corners and then puddling. Since my eyes are constantly watering on the outside corners, if I get this too low and right like in this crease right here, it's likely to smudge. But that's just because my tears are caustic. They reconstitute it and then it just starts to hurt. So I have to kind of keep it higher up. That's just a me problem because my eyes are always watering. But this lasts more than 12 hours. No smudging, no flaking, no transfer which is really great. But I'm using this just above the lash line, creating a little wing going up, and then in between the lashes to kind of darken up some gaps. I really have been liking this, but I'm still not sure that when I'm done with this, I'm gonna have to have another one, because it's kind of expensive. I really do like the one from M, maybe just a, a hair more, and it could be because I've been using it for so long, it's like second nature to me. All right, here is one that I tried from Moira. This is a double-ended gel and liquid liner. So one side has this retractable black gel liner. This is actually really good. I picked one up for my 14-year-old Lily, who um, was doing a video with me earlier this month trying makeup for the first time. Lily wanted black liquid liner. Lily wanted like the whole shebang. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know what? Let's let's do one of these. The other side is actually a brush, if I'm correct. Look how black it is. It is amazing. You can get really fine lines from it if you want, but maybe not as fine as the Lisa Eldridge. Um, I like that we have a combo here, but I'll tell you, this liquid liner doesn't last as long as the one from Lisa. Um, it's not as easy for me to apply because even though it does have that brush, I think it's a brush tip. Actually, I think it's a felt tip. I struggle the same way I do with the one from Lisa. I'm used to a brush tip. And these felt tip liners are just a little bit more rigid. Um, they do deposit a really good amount of color. Uh, longevity, the Lisa Eldridge one wins out. But if you're looking for a affordable gel liner and liquid liner, this is great. My 14 year old has really been enjoying it. I don't know that this is the best there is. I do prefer when it comes to liquid liner, the little Myra, what is it? The micro precise, the micro tip liquid liner. Cause like, look how tiny the, the end is compared to the other one. You see how little the micro tip one is? It's so tiny right here. This one is like a, a normal traditional size. And I think for me, 
If I'm looking for a liquid liner from Moira, I'm going to recommend this microchip one because you can get to be really precise and get a really nice little flick without it kind of getting out of control. Because you know that time that you're you're drawing a black liquid wing and then oh, it's a little farther and then your liner kind of becomes like your whole look. <laughs> that doesn't happen as often with this. I do like this. I like that it's double ended. You're getting more bang for your buck. But if I'm recommending a liquid liner from Moira, it's going to be the microchip one. I did pick up another Moira eyeliner. I really like this one. This is a Supernova Multi-Chrome Gel Liner. This is in the shade 05 Flare. So this is, this is beautiful. It kind of goes kind of like a green to this kind of peachy gold shade. It is so pretty. This is fun. I like having a multi-chrome liner, but I want that multi-chrome liner to be affordable because I don't use it every day. You know, brown liner, black liner, um, you know, something that's really long wearing and willing to shell out a little bit more for. Um, and it's not that this isn't long wearing, it actually wears really well, but I don't always go for multi-chrome eyeliner. But this is so fun and it comes in a variety of shades and it's really affordable. The other thing that's really cool, look, the end of it has like a little sharpener in here so you can sharpen this. I love when brands have a sharpener for retractable products like this. So you can get it as sharp as you want, but this color is so much fun. And I like wearing this on a day when it's all I'm wearing, this and mascara. And it's a really fun, just a little bit of color, but a little playful as well. Um, this has been great. Out of all the eyeliners I've been trying recently, the one that I love the most is this one here. This is from Persona. Persona has this amazing 24 hour waterproof eyeliner. It's so good. I have it in brown. I have it, I think in bronze. And then recently, in the last month or two, they came out with three new shades to extend the shade range. And I picked up this one. This one is in graphite. It is so good. So it's not really like a gray, it's kind of like a, a gray with a little bit of brown to it. And for someone like me, who's always looking for a nuanced shade that gives depth but is not too dark, because my fair skin, when I use a black, it's a lot of contrast. And I feel like my eyes always look better. Today I'm wearing a burgundy liner. I like having ones like this that aren't like solid black because this kind of smudges and it kind of gives that look and it doesn't really make my eyes look as harsh. Sometimes I want that black line, but the older I get, the more I appreciate shades like this. And this pencil does not but I can put this in my upper waterline. There is something that has been happening to my eyes. I've always liked to put something in my upper waterline just to blank out that area, but the older I get, I feel like my lid is turning up more and more, and we're seeing more of that waterline, and before it wasn't always visible, and I feel like it is now. So anytime I put liner above and mascara on, you see this stark strip of flesh colored skin underneath. So I'm always looking for a liner that I can put in my upper waterline and when I blink does not transfer to my lower waterline. This one is great. This one I think is like $16 and it glides really nicely and when it's set, it's set. This stuff, I mean, it's not going any anywhere, anywhere. I really like this liner and I was so glad to get another one. The one thing I will tell you is this dries out if you don't keep the cap on. So apply it the way you want it. Don't leave it out on the counter or uh, wherever you put your makeup on, like your breakfast table or whatever without the cap, because it'll dry out, it'll kill your pencil. So keep the cap on nice and tight and you'll be fine. Let's talk about something I can't stop reaching for. I am wearing it today. I feel like I've been wearing it every single time I do my makeup and it's this new shade from Patrick Ta. So this is his blush duo and this is the shade not too much. Okay. I, first of all, have really, really leaned into wearing this the way that Patrick designed it, which is powder first and then a little bit of the cream dabbed over the top just to bring like a little bit of life back to the face and not make it look too dry and powdery, a little more skin like with a little bit of kind of like a skin like glow. Love that. But these two colors, because I am fair, I do have another one of these from Patrick. And I tell you, it. I always have to be really careful when applying it. I kind of don't have to be careful with this. And that's what I love. The other one I have is called She's That Girl. And it's a really pretty peachy pink. But I love how more kind of beige and muted this is. And for me, it gives just enough color without turning into clown cheeks. This, I mean, it's 
stunning. It's stunning and it brings so much vibrancy and life to the face. But if I am not careful, the next thing I know, it looks like it's 1987 and I am wear it all to blush. Um, I really do like this formula. I like how long it wears. I have combo skin, so everything is normal here, but I'm oily in the T-zone. So since I don't really have a ton of oils coming up through my cheeks, but I'm not dry, this I can use just the powder. I can use just the cream, but when I use them both together, I like the look that I get, and I'm not wearing any highlight today. I like that the little bit of glow that I get from the blush is just enough to bring that life and that little bit of subtle realness back to the face without it being blingy. I really like this formula and I love the three new shades it came out with. This one here in Not Too Much is absolutely perfect. The minute I found these little tiny micro nano pencils for eyebrows, I've been head over heels. I haven't really been using anything else. I don't know how much is left, but my favorite one, the one that I have been reaching for nonstop, the one that I'm wearing today, is this one here from CoverGirl. So this one is a, the Clean Fresh um, Brow, the one millimeter nano pencil. This is the teensiest, tiniest, little itty bitty, tiny, tiny, tiny. Let me show it to you next to a normal small tipped brow pencil. All right. This is the one from e.l.f. This is like their $5 eyebrow pencil. It's the exact same size as a Brow Wiz, as a NYX micro pencil. And here is that Nano one millimeter pencil. Oh my goodness. I have this in shade 500 medium brown. I think I, think I would like it in something just a hair cooler. Um, it's not like red red in the brows but in the sunlight it looks like it could be just a little too light for me the, my favorite thing about this is how small of a little teeny tiny mark i can make and it really does look like tiny little hair strokes i love this pencil so much don't press too hard you will snap it off the other one i've been trying is the one from benefit this is 25 dollars. this one here i think is like 12 or 13 and you're getting twice as much here as you are here just keep that in mind. But if you need something even skinnier, this one's one millimeter. This is 0 0.8 millimeters. And it's a little bit smaller. Um, the packaging is interesting because it has kind of like this little tiny plastic casing around the pencil itself. This is shade number four. I just snapped off the tip. That's the one thing you gotta be careful. You can't press too hard. I never snap the tip when I'm going through my brows because I'm using a light hand, but when I'm swatching on the back of my hand, I'm forever breaking this thing. So I just gotta be careful. All right, so this is the one from Benefit. This is the one from CoverGirl. They're both like miraculously tiny, but you can see this one's a little bit warmer. This one's a hair darker and a little bit cooler. I really like these. I feel like this is a sort of product if you want to just like your, your hair is really good and you need one or two spots where you need to just fill in like a little tiny gap. I've tried to do that with the brow pen and I like it, but some days the brow pen treats me good. Like, you know, I get my liquid eyeliner on and it looks good really quickly. And sometimes it's like, whoa, too much darling. <laughs> you know, with black liquid liner pretty soon it tunes into like, Amy Winehouse, that happens with those brow pens in my eyebrows. I'm going and it's just a little tiny flick, little tiny flick, and then like, oh no, too much, too much. The reason that I like these a little bit better than those brow pens is that they aren't too much. They're just enough and they're so tiny, you really can't tell where you just fill in that little tiny gap. You just don't have that visible, you know, skin tone peeking through the brows. I love these. The two mascaras I can't stop wearing are these guys. I love the new Kitten Lash from Lisa Eldridge. I'm wearing this today. I don't even curl my lashes anymore. I don't know who I am. I'm like, what? This is a beautiful mascara. And normally me and a curved wand, we do not get along. This is great. I have not once. This is one of those little rubber or silicone molded wands. Those usually I end up poking myself in the eye. Since I've had this, I've worn it almost every day and I have not once poked myself in the eye. Not once. The other thing that I like about this is my lashes don't feel like they have anything on them, although they do. And if I give my eyelashes a curl, this goes on beautifully, but I get as much like curl when I just brush it on. I, I love this. I don't know what this is all about. This does not flake. This does not smudge. This does not transfer. I really, really, really like this mascara. And this is one of those I'm like, don't fall in love with it. Do you really wanna be buying a luxury mascara? Maybe, maybe. I'm not quite sure I love it more than my Lancome Monsieur Big. 
but she's gorge. All right, here's one that I do like and is definitely more affordable. And this is a tubing mascara. Now I, for years, have been using the Hamish Smudge Stop, the curling uh, formula. I didn't know they had a volumizing formula. The curling one has one of those curved wands like the one from Lisa Eldridge. This one looks like a more traditional wand. This is great because it's that same formula that tubes your lashes, comes off easily in little tubes with warm water, doesn't flake, doesn't smudge, doesn't transfer, lasts until you take it off. Uh, yeah, I really, really, really like this. I don't, I don't have to work hard to get this off, but this takes like a bi-phase cleanser. This comes off with just warm water. So on a day when I'm like, uh -huh, I'm tired, I know it's gonna be a long day, tubing mascara. On days I want like soft, fluttery, beautiful, perfect lashes, Lisa Eldridge, can't stop using these. This volume one, I may only buy the volume one from now. I don't know. I, I really like these, but I've always liked the Hamish Tubing Mascara. It's a Korean brand. It's totally worth it. It's about $14. And if you ever find it on sale half off, pick up a couple tubes. I think you'll like it. These little guys from Moira are fantastic. These are the Chromalite Shadows. This one here is in Fairy Dust. This one here is in Sugar Crush. These are, they feel like dupes for the Urban Decay Moon Dust Shadows. These are seriously sparkly. I have a little bit of this one kind of like right here in the center. I really, I think these are nice. They do have some sparkle fallout if you don't use them with a primer. Um, I've been using them with the primer most days. I didn't today, so I might have a little bit of something going on down here, but it's really not that bad. I really like that these guys from Moira come in a wide variety of shades, blues, greens, pinks, yellows. I feel like they have a little bit more color selection than the ones from Urban Decay. And Urban Decay has very similar packaging. They're $24 a piece. I think these are nine or a little bit less. These are really great. I like them a lot. I do like the Moon Dust Shadows from Urban Decay, but yeah, these are these are worth it. If you want some fun colors and want to spend too much, Moira's got great sickles. I'm gonna link the video in the description bar below where I put these on and swatch these. These are the new Viseart Pedophores. Um, this is the Isolde palette. It's so pretty. I'm wearing this one today with one shade from the Hesperides, but this one is kind of like a cool kind of light pink leaning one. Um, and then this one here has a little bit more taupe and a little bit more kind of lavender going on. I know they look remarkably similar here. The Hesperides has a duochrome and this really pretty one here. These guys here are just both um, shimmer shades. I love these. I've always loved the quads from Viseart. These pedophores I think are fantastic. And for $25, it's everything that I want in a compact, I have everything I want to create a look. And these kind of fall on the lighter end of the spectrum um, and are great because they're just enough and not too much like the Patrick Ta for my fair skin. I feel like there are some other quads like this from Viseart that definitely go much darker like the Tyrion or the Violetta. They have some really nice dark colors and on my eyes, it looks like I'm trying too hard. So shades like this, getting a look like this where it's a little bit of sparkle, it's a little bit of fun, but it's not too much. I know they're kind of boring Betty eyeshadows, but I can't stop using these. These are fantastic. I've been using these a lot along with the other one I've already told you about and I love it. The uh, Praline Epice. I just love these little quads. They're, they're stunning. They're beautiful. I have almost all of them and I reach for them all the time. They're so easy to use. I did pick up another lip liner from Moira. This is their Lip Appeal Waterproof Liner. Again, another one that has a sharpener in the end. This color is Dolly. I really like these lip liners because when they set, they don't go anywhere. They're kind of like a um, really creamy gel, but when it sets down, it becomes kind of matte. These kind of remind me a little bit of the Lisa Eldridge Enhance and Define Lip Pencils. I'm not saying they're quite as good, but they have that same longevity. They don't have the same cosmetic elegance and the ones from Lisa do, and they don't have the same types of nuanced shades. But the fact that when I put the Lisa Eldridge lip liner down, she doesn't go anywhere all day long. This really hangs tight. And I feel like out of a lot of the other budget sort of affordable lip liners that are more, um, you know, drugstore type brands, this one just lasts so long. I have two of these. The other one I have is in the shade. Superstar, it's kind of like a red. I really like these. These are really, really, really nice. Totally worth it if you can find a shade you like. I'm also gonna link the video down below where I lip swatch every single one of these Merit lipsticks. These are the new Signature Lip Matte Lipsticks. Oh my goodness, 
These are $26. These are incredible. I am wearing the one today in Maison. So they're matte, but they're creamy. They are not overwhelming. They feel so good on the lips. I really like the way that these wear because like the ones in the cream formula, they are comfortable. They don't dry my lips out and yet they're still matte. They do kind of have a little bit of that blurred effect on the lips. I'm trying to swatch things on the back of my hand while talking to you and not being terribly successful. So let me just do my swatches and I'll come back and show you and then we'll talk. Here they are. These are so pretty. This one here is Maison. This is Power. This is Classic Vermilion and equestrian. These are so fantastic. What I like about these is they don't settle into the vertical lip lines on my lips. I'm wearing one today. It feels creamy. It feels like a creamy lipstick, but they're matte. I don't know. And I feel like I recently have gone through and ranked all of my luxury lipsticks from worst to first. And when I did the ones for the matte lipsticks, I feel like these $26 lipsticks beat out so many of those. Uh, I think the packaging is stunning. I think they're really pretty. Um, I like the way that they feel on the mouth. I like the way they wear. I get about three and a half to four hours of wear, but you know, if I get a little bald spot in the middle, it's really easy for me to smush my lips together or use my finger to pull and redistribute. I, I do that all the time. But these are great when you have them on kind of lightly like a blotted lip or like a little bit of a fuzzy edge going on. Or if you want them really crisp, pair them with a lip liner and you get the most stunning, bold, comfortable, non-drying matte lip color for $26. I, I really like these lipsticks. I like both the cream and the matte formula, but I really prefer the colors that they have going on in this new release of mattes. And when they are blurred out, they're just so pretty. I mean, here's the one that I'm wearing today in Maison. I've got it kind of on really heavy, but there have been days that I wear it really light and it just kind of lightly mattes my lips and makes them look like my natural lip, but a little bit more. So you can thin these out, shear these out, but they do have that nourishing, comfortable, kind of creamy feel to them. They don't really feel like a matte lipstick. I love that about them. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching today. Here's where I wanna know, what have you been trying? What have you been loving? Have you tried any of these things? Do you have any thoughts? Um, or if there's something you think I should be trying, let me know in the comment section down below. Have a fantastic day. and I will see you again soon.